sitting here with my dear friend Jan. Hi. We uh, did a couple of talks in Dutch. Mm -hmm. And now for the first time, uh, a little chat in English for our uh, English project Advaita TV. Mm -hmm. What does the term Advaita mean to you? And, and when did you first hear of it? Can you remember that? Um, at the end of my search, because in the beginning I never heard about enlightenment or consciousness or Advaita or non-duality or Zen. I just had a lot of fear and restlessness in my body and I want to get rid of it. So that was the, the beginning of my search. So I went to um, uh, counseling, coaching, uh, meditation and after seven or eight years uh, Eckhart Tolle came on my path mm -hmm. and afterwards uh, Jet McKenna, Ajay Santi, Nisikadatta and then I discovered uh, Advaita. Was your um, first part of your life, let's say the first 20-25 years, was it such a burden for you? Was yes. it struggling? Yes. What happened? I don't know. I don't know. But from the day I was born it was a struggle. It, uh, I had the idea that I was uh, went in the wrong movie. Yeah. I you didn't. I didn't understand. I feel I didn't uh, pronounce that uh, like I'm doing now. But mm -hmm. I felt like an alien. You you landed on planet Earth. You thought, what the hell is this? Yes. Here? What the hell? <laughs> Why is everybody screaming and shouting? And yeah, I want peace. You know, uh, relax, everybody. Yeah. And did you blame, let's say, society for that? Did you mm -hmm. think? Of course, that? I was angry on of the world, angry of my parents, uh, but most of all, I was angry of myself. Yeah. And why uh, I was angry about myself, of the world, I didn't know. So that's why I uh, went to search. Yeah. And I went to search to get rid of the anxiety, to get rid of the fear, to get rid of the anger, to get rid of all the uh, stress in my body mm -hmm. so that was the the beginning of the search did you have like uh, panic attacks or yeah uh, yeah a lot of panic attacks how, how, how at what time was it at night time or daytime or any time any time yeah uh, especially when there is a lot of people a lot of people and uh, when there's not enough room mm. so when it when you are in a closed restaurant or uh, a closed school and you have to sit and <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, see the teacher, uh, that uh, were scary parts. It's claustrophobic, mm -hmm. it's a word I think. So I always <laughs> you ever found out why that was? Were you, were you afraid that people would hurt you or? I don't know, I was, I was just uh, all the time uh, anxious. Yeah. The, 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 the planet Earth, um, felt not safe. Yeah. That was the, the background where fear could speak. <laughs> it's not safe here. Yeah. I want to get rid of it. Why did why why do we have to do this? Why do we have to school? Why do I have to work? Why do I have to pay this? Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. A big question mark. A big question, yes. And um have you ever tried to leave the planet? Let's say Yes. Uh, oh yes. Yeah. Well well because I found out meditation. And then it was Ah, oh. <sighs> silence. Yeah. So that became the new addiction. Yeah, of course. Being in stillness, as Eckhart says. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, not entirely, because when you are in silence, there is no addiction. Because you don't have to go in silence, because it is. Mm -hmm. But when you are in the ego and you are stressed, and then you think, I want silence, that's the addiction. Then you go to meditate and... And then it's silence and then you forget you want to go in silence. And that's real silence. So now I don't have to do anymore. There's always silence. In the background. Always. Yeah, yeah. sometimes fully and sometimes in the background. Yeah. That was the, the big opening a few years ago. And what did you have to do to reach that? Or was it just a blessing? I don't know. That's a big question, huh? Everybody has. Yeah. I don't know. Tell me how. I don't know. To reach Just that. do anything. Read, go to satsang, um, meditation, do whatever you want. It will come or not. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's very disappointing I, I I guess to hear because I don't know because I did a lot uh, do a lot of things I read uh, some books I went to meditation retreats I I did uh, rebalancing I uh, took uh, ayahuasca uh, silent retreats drugs ecstasy yeah. heroin uh, yeah. cocaine uh, all kind of stuff you did it all I did it all yeah. yes um pain that's a subject that comes to mind right now um and when i talk to pain it's yeah. emotional and uh, physical pain so not a uh, toothache or mm -hmm. something of yeah. a headache yeah. but just emotional pain just a restlessness in the stomach yeah it's a lot yeah it's just it's uh like uh yeah how do you call it a nausea mm -hmm. it's like nausea yeah yeah and were those panic attacks um, little bits of that uh, anxiousness that came up and then you started pushing it down again? Or Yeah. Yeah, and do a lot of things. Just uh, go uh, work all day. Yeah, keeping uh, busy. Yeah, keeping busy. Yeah. Not not, uh, not silence. Oh, because uh, I hate silence yeah. in, in the past. I hate to be emptiness. Uh, I hate. So I want to... Uh, I When I go to sleep... Then I watch television, then and then I sleep with the television. It's never, never silence. Until now, you can. Until now, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about Eckhart. Uh, I watched a lot of him. I saw a lot of him. I, I even had the opportunity to talk to him. Mm -hmm. um, what did Eckhart Tolle tell you? What struck something inside of you? Nothing. No? Just, just his presence. Looking at him. Yeah, because somebody gave me a new earth. Yeah, the book. A, a friend of mine, but I, I never read any books. I didn't like books. <laughs> so then s another friend gave me Finthorn Retreat, yeah. uh, a DVD of him. So mm -hmm. I played that. And then I was, hey, the DVD is broken. It's the... The, the, <laughs> the guy's not talking. The guy's not talking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but something, I don't know, there, there was something present there, something uh, spaciousness, and I just relaxed. Yeah. I looked into his eyes and I look at myself. So that was the first glimpse of the awakening. Yeah. And I thought, this is cool. I pay a lot of money to all those therapists and I take drug and I just have to do nothing. I just have to be nobody. Yeah. That's cool to be nobody. Just to be here right now. Yeah. That's it. And I was laughing and crying at the same time because this was I looking for. And uh, I was 32 years old. Mm -hmm. So 32 years old, I was looking, 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 looking. I was dreaming in my ego. And first I was fully awake. Yeah. Was that because of Eckhart or did you find that in other people also? First I thought it was Eckhart. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and then I really... Uh, get the get the spirit. Mm -hmm. How do you call it? The taste. Is it taste? Yeah, yeah. for spirit, the spiritual stuff. So I yeah. get uh, read books, 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 yeah. books, books, books. Watching YouTube videos. Yes, a meditation. Uh, no, it was no no YouTube at the time. Okay. Because I bought a lot of DVDs yeah. and go to silent retreats, go rebirthing, work on my inner child, and all yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I did it for eight years. And then still there was a lot of ego because I want to still to get rid of my ego. <laughs> that was my ah. big trap to yeah. get rid of my ego. Yeah. And after a few years, uh, at the end of the search, Advaita came. And then I uh, read Jet McKenna, Achanti, Alexander Smith, and so on. And Nisikadatta. Nisikadatta. Yeah. And then I realized, no, I don't have to get rid of my uh, my anger. I don't have to get rid of my uh, fear to get rid of something that's the big problem hmm. so I was still resistant life yeah so and then yeah it it's uh, it it fall down all the the ego patterns I still have ego of course but all those mechanisms the, all those mechanisms are disappearing yeah so the ego is not the boss anymore but it's now and then when I need it yeah it's a handy tool to yeah, it's a handy tool yes yeah. correct could you say that anger is as uh, much life and 
and so valuable as laughter is 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 that the problem that we make it uh, distinguish how do you say it uh, we we make a difference between laughter and anger laughter is good anger is bad yeah is that where the struggle starts um when you push anger away mm -hmm. for many years then anger becomes very big yeah. and very uh, poison for your body yeah yeah so, and so it's not good or bad i think more in terms like natural or not natural mm. yeah. and when you push it down for 20 years then it feels very scary and very uh yeah how do you say it uh, not natural mm. so when but when you pass that uh, phase and that can take many years to get rid of all the emotions you put down and then you are free and then when Dennis anger is coming it's two seconds maybe then and then it's gone yeah so then it's uh, no problem anymore yeah but still I feel uh, my preference is to feel joyful yeah. instead of uh, feel anger but yeah. when there is anger there's no pushing down anymore yeah it's you it's it's welcome it's yeah. welcome yeah. yes it, something comes to mind that that maybe it has to do something with childhood where you as a child are taught uh, to behave yourself mm -hmm. and being joyful and cheerful and happy and laughing mostly no parents make a problem out of that but it's the face when you are hurting or this, uh, you're crying or the face that you are uh, angry at something or somebody that my parents told me, uh, oh, shh, shut up, don't do that, it's bad. Don't let the neighbors hear that you are such a, such an angry kid. Is that a mechanism that, yes. that works like that? Yeah, then you learn to suppress, to, to, to suppress it because yeah. it's not good, yeah. because your mother is stressed out and yeah. You see, uh, wants uh, not your, <laughs> yeah, not your waist because he don't uh, feel uh, healthy also, mm -hmm. and uh, so a lot of parents also are still children, St still with their children-like minds. Yes, of, of course, of pu pushing everything away. Yes, yeah. and they project their uh, uh, fear of feeling. Uh, they uh, learn it to the children also. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Um, nowadays you do also uh, talks with people, people mm -hmm. come to visit you. Um, what is the m most hurt problem people tell you? What, did, what, what, what do they come to visit you for? To get rid of anger, <laughs> yeah. to get rid of fear. Yes, it's always anger the same. Fear. Yes, always the same. Nobody comes to you and says, oh, I'm so happy all the time, please. Yes, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get rid of my happiness. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, that's true. Yeah. Because I think every spiritual search uh, starts with a crisis. Mm -hmm. I, I, some people say that's not true because I really like it. Mm -hmm. But still, there's in the background always a kind of... Uh, yeah. Not satisfied. Not satisfied feeling. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. that's true. Uncontentment, or how do you yeah. call it in English? Yeah. Not satisfied. Yeah. I, I can... I can recognize that because a happy child don't uh, uh, read books about spirituality <laughs> no. or when a when a man is in love it's don't no. starts to uh, read books about love or something yeah. yeah so there has to be something there has to be a trigger maybe you're not conscious of the uh, the problem at the time but there has to be uh, yeah unsatisfaction is yeah to come so that's always a starting point and that's a good thing People think a crisis is something bad, but it's something good because you wake up yeah. out, out of the the fairy tale uh, society to, uh, tells you. Yeah, well, we are we are friends, and when I called you up uh, about a year ago and I said I have a burnout, the first thing you said was congratulations. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> uh, yeah, but in uh, when when you have a burnout, yeah. you what? Yeah, you, yeah. you it's 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 not fine mm -hmm. but when you get out of the burnout it's it was a blessing yeah. i had uh, one very very big burnout mm -hmm. it was a blessing because i didn't face life i didn't want to feel my problems yeah so uh, so life first give you a little hit mm -hmm. and when you don't listen 
another hit, <laughs> yeah. and when you don't listen, another hit, and it spanks you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it breaks the ego open, yeah. if you want it or not. Yeah. So it's not it's no choice also. No. And does it have to do anything with age? Are there certain um, moments in someone's life where things start to not work anymore, burst open? I don't know. No. I don't know. But a lot of people uh, have their first awakening around 28, 29. That's also the age that a lot of uh, famous singers committed suicide. So. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's no coincidence, the Club of 27 with all oh, the yeah. Jimi Hendrix and Kurt Cobain, Amy Winehouse. Yeah. So 27 is... It's, it's I think, a, yes. Yeah. Maybe it's, that's a good, uh, good age. Yeah. Maybe, a, maybe a nice average. Yeah. yeah. Um, you did all the things. You, started, you, you searched for it in drugs, in sex, in alcohol, in, in working all the time. Mm -hmm. um, that didn't bring you anything. Um, how did your... Uh, the people around you react. What advice ga did they g give you? Uh, you mean react on my uh, anger, or no? Just that the th they. St I think they saw that it was not going well with you. And yeah, okay. What yes. kind of advice did they give you? Uh, uh, go on vacation, uh, work less. No, because I had a lot of uh, spiritual people around me, okay. and I didn't have any spiritual. Uh, interest mm -hmm. how do you call it mm -hmm. so uh, so read Eckhart hour oh, I don't want to <laughs> I wasn't away. to go away yeah 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 but then uh, somebody a uh, good friend of mine was a, a, a Reiki mm -hmm. a Reiki master and he put the uh, hand on my head yeah and I felt uh, I felt a presence in his in his hand so I was very scared so I was more scared than before yeah so I was awake at night and and I saw the hand moving, so that was the f first glimpse also. So a lot of people push me into spiritual okay. spirituality. From yeah, th that's your path. But easily, if you had the wrong friends, you could have gone completely mad. Yeah, before I had the wrong mm -hmm. friends, so I went into drugs, alcohol. But that was a nice uh, period also. Yeah. Because when the first time I took ecstasy. I felt the joy I had, uh, I had as a child. Yeah. So, oh yes, this, this, this is what I want. Yeah. So that, uh, so drugs can be uh, a big opening also. Yeah. Because you had uh, in the in the in the sixties, you had LSD. Yeah. And all kind of stuff. So, it's it's not the pill. It's always the so the effects of of uh, drugs is also inside your head. Yeah, of course. And identity was that is is that a big problem for? people is that that the main thing we suffer that we have to keep up appearances keep mm -hmm. up this identity of Jan the successful uh, coach or a successful member of society or did, did those things change were you less inspired to uh, make something out of your life when you discovered spirituality um. Yes, but it was not one moment. I had a very big, a very big opening. Mm -hmm. It was completely, uh, I disappeared completely. And that was not a nice disappearance because I had a lot of meditation experience. That was nice, you know, going to silence. But there was a moment I was pulled out of my body very violently. And that was not nice. So I disappeared in a vast black endless coma that was very scared hmm. and that was the big shift and then i realized i'm nobody without reading i'm nobody yeah. without thinking you saw I'm it. yeah well i yeah i realized yeah, yes yeah. and yeah. that was a big shift why was that a big shift because i never trapped in ego anymore i still have ego yeah. but i never trapped into it again because so every, every day I saw um, a million times when the ego tries to uh, to pull you back to pull me back. Yeah. But you see it, yeah. and then you can I don't know not decide, but you're out of it. So you can't identify with the ego or not. That that's the only identification you have, because all other identities are through the ego. Mm -hmm. Because when there is no I, there is no identity. Because where are all identities without the I? 
So mm-hmm. that was the big realization. There is no self. So I was trying to fix myself. I yeah. was trying to get rid of myself. I was trying to love myself. Yeah. I was trying to find myself, but there is no yeah. self. Th- that's the big joke. Yeah. There is no self. But still, that is what all the, the a lot of courses tell you: improve yourself. Mm-hmm. I did it also. Yeah. But and we're, so we're we're f- we're improving something that, that doesn't have any substance. Yeah, but that's the, the that's the fun. Yeah. <laughs> in you, the yeah, end, that's the fun, fun in the way. Yeah, when you see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah when you see it, yes, yeah. of course. But that's the fun. Yeah. So f- first you have yeah. to uh, that there's something a lo- uh, uh, yeah. How do you call it? Ontevredenheid. Yeah. It's in Dutch. Not what we talked earlier, not satisfied, something that, that starts... The next, yeah, the complaining. next you. Yeah. And then you uh, t- uh, try to fix it, and then you uh, have a, a whole ego, but that's uh, good. Yeah. But then, uh, and then you have to drop the whole ego. Yeah. But the ego cannot drop itself. So there has to be a force without the ego, which do that. Yeah. Which does that. And that force you can... Uh, only give pointers. You can call it presence, awareness, silence, consciousness. Yeah. And what did uh, that s- change in your life? What did you do before that you don't do now anymore? O- of course, drugs and the sex and alcohol, uh, that's not that important. It's not important anymore. Are there still traps in your life which you can easily slip back into? Angerness. There are no traps anymore. Because when I... um, No, there's no traps anymore. You know that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because when... uh, What what kind of trap maybe you think about? I don't know. Maybe a secret addiction or... Yeah, but when there is an addiction that's not a trap, then there is an addiction. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem anymore. Because... Then there is an addiction. Yeah, but there's no I trying to get rid of the addiction, trying to yeah. uh, use the addiction to better himself. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine something. But about there is that. no addiction anymore. No. Maybe an addiction to to coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Do, do you still get into arguments with people? With your father, with your mother, with no, your not parent, anymore. With co- colleague work. So sometimes with colleague, and then I tell one of twice from uh, I should do this, and then mm-hmm. I stop. Okay. Yeah. N- maybe arguments two times a year. Yeah. And then it's necessary. Yeah. And w- what is uh, fall away is the the um, independence. First, it was independence of friends. Independence of uh, dependent on yeah, yeah independent yeah, on yeah. friends yeah. independent on uh, doing something and yeah. now if a week pass by nothing is done it's good too yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I became very lazy yeah very lazy I love to get I love yeah. to be lazy yes just be yeah just be or yeah. to walk in the forest yeah and I sit on the toilet uh, no I don't I don't uh, in the mood for that today so I delete that. On my agenda, mm-hmm. then yeah. or maybe next uh, next time. Yeah, I go to work, of course, because I have to pay the the the, the, the rent. rent. Yeah, the so. mortgage. Um, you wrote a book. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how we can translate the title of your Dutch book in English. Maybe you have a suggestion. Be quiet now. Yeah, be silent now. Be silent now. Yeah, yeah. It's the difference between silence and, and being quiet. Yeah, be, being quiet is to try to uh, to get the mind, mm-hmm. but silent is the the absolute silence where the whole universe is. Ah, oh, yeah. It's not personal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a relative silence. So then there is silence in your head. Mm-hmm. There is uh, no noise, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the absolute silence. That's what you are. Yeah. Um. Are you planning on uh, doing some more things online, offline? Is there, uh, are you, or just the one-on-one talks? Yeah, I do one-on-one yeah. satsang, you can say. Yeah. Uh, two a week, and uh, maybe for some groups in uh, in this yeah. year. Some people ask me, maybe I will do so. 
but I went to a lot of satsangs, but I also went to a teacher eight years, 101, and that's yeah. very uh, um, confronterend, you yeah, say in Dutch? Confronting. Confronting, then to sit on the back of a group yeah. in satsang. Just so one-on-one -on -one is very... Uh, yeah. You cannot hide. You cannot no. hide. People uh, will s s go to the bottom with you. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I'm now... Um, have now four people who come back regularly who come back to yeah. regularly they are very uh, in a very hectic uh, situation mm -hmm. on their path so all hands on deck <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah because i had nobody um who who was on the same path as me i didn't nobody so it's yeah. very lonely and it's good to have someone who been has been the whole path and can tell you yes. you're at this stage or at this stage. yes and can the traps and say for yeah. oh i did i've been there done that yeah you know because i was i was uh, feeling uh, that i'm walking in neverland for a couple of years yeah because i couldn't go back to the world anymore but i still wasn't fully grounded in yeah. the in the fully realization yet yeah. maybe still Maybe not still, but it's not that problem anymore. Yeah. You were in a it's, I'm still stabilizing, I think. Yeah? Yeah, of course. It doesn't end. Yeah, because when you say it ends, yeah. the, the ego says it's end now. So you, do, you don't sure. Yeah. Because maybe next week I get a burnout again. You, do, you, no, don't, you know. don't know. No. You don't know. So I stay open to life. Yeah. Um, what was I thinking about? We talked about pain. What about love? Is there... Um, uh, is is there uh, a partner in your life? I or uh, what about relationships? Is that still possible when you're self-realized? I'm not self-realized. Okay. No, no. When you're, I, I, I when don't you're awake. I'm not awake. No. <laughs> no, I'm awake from the eye. Okay, but you could because I don't talk about uh, uh, in that kind of terms. Mm -hmm. Like I'm awake and you're not. I don't like to. Okay. I, I never claim uh, such no. a thing. Let's say you recognize your true self. Maybe that's oh, that's too big a word. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't think in that kind of terms. No. But still, there's a change. There's a change. Yeah. There, I call it a shift. The shift. And in Dutch, I say it's uh, it's duidelijk geworden. <laughs> it has become it's come, clear. It's, it's become clear where yeah. all those people talk about. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well. Some clearness. Yeah. And how does love work then? Is is there is there uh, still the need to? Uh, we have this big sign next to your head. Um, love. Mm -hmm. Is that what is love to you? Love is for me uh, from a oneness perspective. So you have a relationship with everybody. You're in love with everybody. Of course. But not on a personal level. Yeah. Not Jan is in yeah. love with uh, this. Uh, yeah. This uh, this mm -hmm. couch. There, so there is love. Yeah, you're in love, and everybody else is also in love. Yeah, of course. So you meet each other in love. Of course. Yeah. So there's no need for another body. Yeah. To tell, uh, to give you love. No, no. When there is a bo another body, okay, yeah. it's cool. Nice. But but yeah, not at this moment, and it's nice also. But isn't that love something that you? Yeah, let's say yesterday, I was in a very loving mood. Mm -hmm. I I uh, I said to someone on WhatsApp. Um, uh, my heart bursts, bursts uh, out of love. I have to. I want to give love to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that sometimes something you and if you feel that, do you go out on the street and yeah, feel it right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> this is like I'm sitting in a in a cloud of of love. Of love. Yeah. Yes. And the cloud is, well, I can subscribe it now. It's like you. Uh, fall out of an airplane, yeah. but without falling. It's like you're the space yeah, yeah, itself. Yeah. It's very weird to talk about when people say, "Oh, he's crazy." Or, "What did he smoke?" Mm. You know. But this, <laughs> it's 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 yeah, very I, weird when you talk about it. Yeah, I can and, feel and, it. and you feel some yeah. some tintling, some tintling uh, yeah. in your stomach, yeah. and it's like you are falling in love yeah. with a person. Butterflies. But it's, but it's uh, falling in love without a reason. Yeah, without an object. Without an object. Yeah. You're in love. You can you can feel love for this glass of Coca-Cola yeah, Light. Of course. Yeah. It's very <laughs> weird to talk about yeah, it, but it's 
it's uh, not even a feeling. It's a uh, recognition. I don't know. It's it's no. n- it's not in words. When you pronounce it, it words is always you murder it. Yeah. Kind of way. It's a. Uh, it's a presence. Mm-hmm. It's a present. That's the word. That's yeah. the right word. Yeah. Uh, a mutual uh, um, man we uh, both love, uh, Alexander Smith, who talked mm-hmm. about this in the 80s and 90s in Holland, uh, once said that um, beauty is love that became alive. That was a nice uh, It's nice. Yeah. Um, okay, so no relationship for you uh, with, some, with one person in particular. No. That doesn't mean that you go out and... Uh, <laughs> swing the world and uh, uh, make love to everybody no no um, but it can happen yeah of course yeah why not and is but, but I'm still asking is it possible to have a normal love relationship when you have recognized love everywhere can you still center your love at one being yeah I don't know no because I didn't have that experience no. you don't know I don't know because a lot of love uh, is not love. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of love in the world is more neediness. Yeah, yeah. I'll because I, n- I need you because I yeah. I'm scared to be alone yeah. and uh, I don't have any money and you have money, so yeah, it's yeah, more yeah, yeah. it's yeah. more trade. Yeah, it's a it's a, a, a an economic thing. Yeah, yeah. I can recognize. That. I understand that, but it's not love. No, it's neediness. Yeah, yeah. True love is when you have a relationship with another person and when that another person falls in love with somebody else and you say okay you're happy for them you're happy yeah that's real love yeah that's what i always thought i never i never comprehended that people say i love you and then when you leave them or they leave you you suddenly start hating each other huh yeah that cannot be if i love you i love you Uh, unless it doesn't matter the circumstances even if you go away even if you never say I love you to me I love you and I know that for sure and that's that's enough yeah I uh, I read Eckhart Tolle um, The Power of Now for the first time and in there's a sentence in The Power of Now was I was very angry about the sentence uh, to fall in love it's an ego thing and I thought what that nice feeling is ego yeah and I was uh, I was very angry but so I teared yeah. up yeah yeah, <laughs> the book. yeah 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 because Probably. I was in a relationship at that time and yeah. I was very jealous when my boyfriend uh, uh, goes uh, clubbing yeah. and, and and I was texting, uh, where are you? And yeah. you're doing it with another <laughs> guy. So, and then the that relationship went over and I thought, what a strange person I was. Yeah. Now I'm feeling good and fine. And when in the in those relationship, the, the, the word relationship uh, um, starts having very weird ego patterns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very weird. Yeah. So then I saw all those ego things and I thought after two years, okay, Agatola has right. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's a right. very big ego thing. Yeah, yeah. Let me close the window for a second if, you, if you're okay because I'm getting cold. Okay. So if I heard you right, and I know because we are friends, uh, um, you're uh, homosexual oriented, uh, how do you call it? Well, I don't know because I had a girlfriend. Uh, yeah, you had a girlfriend when I was seventeen. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. No. Or I bisexual or so all those uh, concepts fallen away. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They they sometimes say that people who uh, realize this or whatever you want to call it who have seen this that they uh, united the man the manly and the womanly or how do you call it the male and the female all together in themselves okay that's what I once heard a teacher right. say does that feel do you still feel like a boy uh, like a man how does that feel well <laughs> you've you've been that for for a couple of years so mm-hmm. people told you that you were a man mm-hmm. um, when I was three four years old I didn't see any difference between me and a girl. That's when they told me, you are a boy, that's a girl. Then I started believing, okay, I'm a, I'm a boy. Mm-hmm. And then I, I got split off from the hole mm-hmm. because on the other side there are girls. Then trying to get whole again, mm-hmm. 
by finding the, the right girl. Mm -hmm. So ma boy and girl get together, homeless. Oh, that's oh, that yeah, you mean? That's yeah, what I mean. yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yes, that's true because yeah. I'm more soft now. Then I was yeah. used to be. I was always. Uh, Male, masculine. I have to uh, to work out a yeah, lot yeah, to yeah, work yeah. on my muscles, yeah. and I still do. But it's it's soft. It's just it's yeah. It's it's in balance. Yeah. It's a, yes, it's a balance between the uh, the manly and the female part. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And also that energy, the male and the female energy, are both. Yeah. Inside us. Yeah, a powerful but still soft. Yeah. 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 So yeah. you can easily fall in love with 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 whatever. I think so. Yeah. 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 It's very weird. <laughs> yeah. No, I I can get a taste weird. of that. No, I've I've been I've had the complaint of girlfriends in the in the last let's say twenty years mm -hmm. that I'm um, also too w womenly, too womenly in my energy, not yeah. masculine enough. But I also thought, yeah, but I can't be manly. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a beard right now. I can, I can do the manly stuff, but I also like the womenly stuff. Yeah. Not painting my nails, but uh, you know, uh, <laughs> talking a lot and <laughs> philosophizing and doing the. I love doing the laundry, as you see here on this attic. <laughs> so yeah, um, you are HIV positive. Yes, correct. Um, you don't look like someone who suffers from that. No, I no. don't know. No. Because I uh, was diagnosed mm -hmm. HIV positive and I feel uh, a strange kind of peace. <laughs> it's very weird. Why? I don't know. What kind of peace? I don't know. No. Were you uh, s some kind of a relief that you had it or? No, not relief. No. I don't know why. Hmm. Peace. Peace. Yeah. Because and my uh, boyfriend, because I had it, I uh, get it from him. Mm -hmm. He was always struggling and he was against uh, his yeah. uh, his status. So maybe I saw it that 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 doesn't work yeah. and it makes you more ill. Yeah. So maybe that was a realization also. And I never. Um, I'm not afraid to die anymore. I'm not afraid to get uh, to get sick or something. Yeah. I don't like pain or something, mm -hmm. but my condition is uh, fine. I, uh, I take uh, three or four pills each day and I'm more tired than I used to be, but mm -hmm. still it's fine. Yeah. I, I don't think the whole day, oh, I'm HIV and no. I'm going to die. You're not a member of the HIV platform no, or no, websites. No, no, no. No, it's no identity for you because there are some. You told me once there are some people online who say HIV pause on their profile at Grinder or mm -hmm. whatever dating. Site. I do too. Yeah, because uh, they have to know it. Because okay. I don't push it away. I don't uh, say from oh I don't I have HIV because I'm silent. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I have HIV. That's my body has it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I don't push it down, but I don't um, behave like a victim hmm. or something. Yeah. So I'm uh, honest about it, but I'm not uh, no, pushing it down. Would you go for a cure if there was a cure? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Because I take medicine. Yeah. Of course. But w what would you say to someone who's watching this and who maybe just had the diagnose HIV positive? What's Don't believe your thoughts. Believe your body. Hmm. When, uh, when, you, uh, when you have a question about life, never trust your head, but always trust your body. I always said, so that, that's the whole purpose of meditation, to go to your body, yeah. just feel. And then there is nothing, <laughs> yeah. because or there is pain, or there is tiredness, or there is nothing. Yeah. And when you're tired, oh, uh, lay on the couch. Yeah. That's a strange thing, huh? that the, the body communicates with, with us, if you want to call it that, Without words, mm. there, there's knowing. You know when you are tired. The yes. body doesn't tell you. You know it. Uh, you know when you have pain. You know when you're horny. <laughs> yeah. You know when you're sad. You know when everything you know. Yeah. But when this translation with the words comes, then the shit hits the fan. Huh? Then, mm. then we start thinking about, oh, I shouldn't be, <laughs> I shouldn't be tired. I shouldn't be this. 
is is that maybe a, a, a problem we people have these kind of days that we're so we got this language to communicate but we tell ourselves stories all the time about what is happening inside outside the story is not a problem but we believe the stories oh. and that's the problem and the belief comes out of uh, out of the fear because the ego is not only a mental thing mm -hmm. the ego also is an emotional thing and the emotional and the thoughts are working together yeah. and that's that's create ego so you think something above your neck mm -hmm. and you feel it uh, yeah, in your below. stomach yeah. yeah so there is a kind of uh, I told somebody a kind of octopus uh, filled with fear in yeah. your stomach Goes like, uh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. wants to yeah. grab all kind of things yeah and he wants to grab thoughts so then you have a thought about uh, you see it rain and then you're feeling uh, uh, anger because you want to walk and uh, uh, so it's it's yeah and so when because ego in itself doesn't exist but but he takes uh, thoughts and emotions and then it feels like an episode yeah 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 so then it feels very real because when the ego it consists only of uh, thoughts it was it will be one second and it's gone yeah. if the ego only consists of emotions it will be gone but ah. so be the witness of that and then you're free so that's why I, I tell people go to silence and then you see the ego but the state is silence and then because the ego cannot survive in the light of what you are yeah and then it disappear and then you're nobody again yeah you don't fuel this this yeah this thing that's going on and Eckhart Tolle calls that the pain body yeah huh? the the the, the uh, clustered emotions and pain and fear that you yeah you can call it that yeah. also or the wounded inner child yeah uh, some uh, philosophy will say it also that's true yeah and it's like watching all kind of horror movies and scary movies is that a good way to get rid of your pain or is that just uh, uh, again fueling that balloon then you have to watch yourself because uh, sometimes I love to uh, watch also uh, that kind of movie but if you have to watch every day mm -hmm. a movie then you are a slave and then it's the octopus <laughs> who's who's hungry, yeah, hungry for and more. who wants to get more yeah. so th that's maybe another tip uh, uh, when you uh, addiction because uh, I get a lot of uh, questions about people when I am addicted to something or not then I tell uh, tell the person quit the thing you think you're addictive of mm -hmm. for one week and then you know in one day <laughs> are you are are you addicted or not so when, when you are addicted to sex stop sex for mm -hmm. one week and feel what's happening yeah so you're not like the all those advaita teachers who say there's not that I, I cannot stop the addiction is me uh, is there still something inside of us that can make a choice between being addicted or being not addicted or? I don't think it's a it's a matter of choice you see it or not yeah because you can't because I say to people watch this so I do it for them mm -hmm. so they don't make a choice I give it to them yeah. when life hits you you didn't do it life did it yeah, to yeah, you yeah. so the ego cannot break the ego so the ego don't have a choice that's correct yeah so I, I never talk about free will or choice because that's for me too f uh, philosophic yeah because I always go what's here right now yeah so life decides yeah yeah that sounds true because when there is rain and I don't want rain <laughs> it's still raining so yeah. it's it's so obvious yeah and when I'm uh, in the traffic jam I can scream and shout yeah. but my scream and shout don't uh, dissolve the traffic it's yeah. still there yeah when I get a, a letter from the taxes that I have to pay, I can b call my mother, they and I still, yeah. it's there, you know. So when you see that, then you then you uh, realize uh, resistance don't help. Yeah, my yeah. anger don't help. Resistance is futile. Yeah. yeah, it's futile. Yeah, our dear friend Osho once talked about uh, the attachment to misery. Yeah, is that an, an, a big addiction also? Just mm -hmm. 
complaining all day about the weather, yep. the life, the Syria war, the IS, uh, the neighbors. Complaining, complaining. Yeah, that's an ego thing. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing, because that's uh, that's how the ego works, because the mind wants to think. Yeah. The mind wants to create problems, because then it has ca- something to chew Then on. has something to yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. So that's not, it's not even bad, it's just what it is. Yeah. But you have to see it. See it is to get free of it. Yeah. That's the only thing you have to do. That's not even a doing. Seeing yeah. is not doing, seeing is always there. Yeah. So it's to... Uh, to get back of your uh, awareness mm-hmm. because all the awareness is in the ego mm-hmm. then but it's not even a choice but you you can I, I say it now so then you can just look yeah that's nice um, we had a, we talked about Osho are there any other teachers besides Eckhart Tolle and Osho that you, yeah, you, you said Arya Shanti you mm-hmm. found of? I like. Muji maybe? Not so. I'm, I'm not uh, a searcher anymore in that way that I uh, grasp for information, but mm-hmm. I read I, I, I read books, of, I wrote, write books, yeah. and I give uh, sessions. Yeah. So I like the point of view of other teachers. Yeah. That's why you watch these kind of yes, interviews. Yes, I like it. Yeah. And I like nowadays uh, Adeshanti. I love him. Yeah, you say he's going to become the new world, uh, world yeah, teacher. Yeah, I think he's very good. Yeah. He's a, he's why? A f- what, what makes him good? Because he is... Um, maybe this is a, f- a, f- a kind of uh, difficult uh, explanation. Uh, because you have uh, Advaita and you have Neo Advaita. Mm-hmm. The big traditional Advaita is very hard because there's a lot of Sanskrit words. And then you have Neo Advaita, they only point to the Absolute. Yeah. And Adashanti take both. Ah. And that's that's nice. Yeah. Because uh, I, I don't like the everything is an illusion approach, but I like the Neo Advaita approach because it's very direct. Mm. Because there is no ego, of course. There is no self. There's only that. Yeah. But to say from the ego point of view that all is an illusion. No, not all is an illusion. The person who say that all is an illusion is, is the an, illusion. Is an illusion itself. Yeah. Then you make it whole again. Yeah. So the, so then you have to do it all way. Everything is an illusion, and everything is real. Then you have both. Yeah. So that's the that's the original nati nati approach they uh, talked about in the old Advaita schools. But yeah. the old Advaita schools were very difficult with a lot of uh, Sanskrit uh, terms. So the first neo Advaita teacher for me, maybe it's Fluke in a Kerk. <laughs> how, how do you say it in uh, in Holland? Yeah, well maybe it's uh, it's uh, it's a shame to say. Yeah, but yeah. Nishikadatta for me was the fair, the first neo advaita yeah. teacher because he said me a body how do you say that that's maybe your world not in my world yeah. i am uh, the universe is, is in me it's yeah. inside me i'm not a body of flesh and meat how do you call yeah. that so he always point to the absolute yeah so that's a very radical but a very nice uh, teaching and that's uh, that's a like about arashanti yeah yeah Talking about world, uh, worldly leaders, worldly stars, uh, we recently lost uh, David Bowie. Michael Jackson died a couple of years ago, and now Prince. Mm-hmm. Uh, at, uh, how you're in, enter- in the entertainment business? How is that for you? That that everybody is be so shocked and sad that Prince passed away. You, 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 do you think that's why is that? That people are so. They get so frustrated by that, that someone dies at that age and is a world famous artist. Yeah. I think they see uh, famous rock stars as... Um, as gods, maybe? As gods, maybe, yeah. yes, I think. So they get a reality check. Yeah. Their big famous star also can die. Untouchable and yeah. boom. Yeah. Because everything disappears. Even the sun will be die. disappear. That's what Eckhart yeah. says, yeah. Of course. 
but still that can make you afraid. Of course. Yeah. Of course. It's, it's a very big shock when I first heard that. Yeah. But when you can stay with that shock, inside the shock, there's peace. Yeah. Because you know that what you are cannot die. Yes. Will not die, was never born. Yeah. 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 And then the only thing that is left is, uh, is silent. Mm-hmm. And it's nice to be nobody. It's very nice because you say I work in the entertainment mm-hmm. industry, and so I work a lot of uh, with a lot of famous people, mm-hmm. and they can't go uh, uh, say something, or it, it's it's said uh, it's in w- the papers. W- it's yeah. in the papers. They can't go out uh, sitting on a terrace to enjoy and relax because yeah. hey, somebody uh, yeah. recognize you. The it's ego loves that. Yeah, but I yeah. But no. It's it's very strange. Yeah. It's nice to be nobody. Nobody and walk just to be nobody. Yeah. It's a good title for your English book maybe. Nice to be nobody. Nice to be nobody, yeah. Yeah. And and literally no body. Mm-hmm. And, and nobody. Yeah. So not the body and also nobody inside the head. A mental construct that you call Jan Prince and that is this age. It's all concepts. Yeah, it's handy when I go to the grocery yeah. and uh, I want to talk to you. Uh, yeah. They can, I, this is silence. Yeah. Too, that's a bit, <laughs> little bit weird. So, you know, I just say I still. Yeah. I just say Jan, of course. Yeah. Of course. But I know that's not, uh, that's relative. Yeah. Not absolute. Yeah. L- let's, for example, name our king. This Wednesday, it's King's Day here yeah. in Holland. And we all know it's a fairy tale, you know, such a thing as a king doesn't exist. No. But we still uh, enjoy the day of the king. Yeah. And we play games and we go to the flea market and we uh, start drinking beers and uh, celebrating the king. But I was thinking, we're not just, we're not celebrating king, we're celebrating life. And we, we call we, we call life now King's Day, but we could also call it Life Day. Huh? Mm. Just a celebration of being alive or of being in this in this crazy thing called life and yeah that that's what i all with all the festivities going on christmas easter carnival festivals it, it almost seems like we're, we're celebrating life over there it's it's not about the the concept we put on it no yeah yes and we celebrate that we don't have to go to work that <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing yeah. also yeah what about music? You're, you're, uh, you, you make mix, uh, you mix records. Uh, what is music to you? Uh, it's just. Um, is it an art form? What's music for me? No, why do you like it so much? Yeah, I don't know. No. You just like it. I like it. Yeah. I like the the vibrations. Yeah. It's it makes you move, you know. Yeah. It sets things in motion. Yeah. yeah. It's energy. I like to. I like to. Uh, I like to sport also. I like to, to move. I like to move. My yeah. body likes to move, and there's also deep side in inside your body. There's an emotional field, which frequent which yeah move to the melodies it hurts. Yeah. So it's like you have all those YouTube films, and w- when you have a lot of animals uh, uh, dancing on music, yeah, also they, they yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. celebrating yeah. life. Yeah, oh, yeah. we are alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's maybe music. It's it's an uh, it's it's something you can grasp, mm-hmm. and also not grasp. It's a manifestation of life to celebrate life. Yeah. That's music to yeah. celebrate life. Yes. I also have that when I hear like a, a bird doing this sound, like dude. Do do that. I mean, you start, yeah, <laughs> drumming with the bird. It's a way of communication, yeah, also yeah, between yeah. yourself yeah. and yourself. Yeah, it's the self. Uh, uh, how do you call it? Entertaining itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice. So we could call this world all entertainment to the self. Well, I don't know. Entertainment is a good word. It's a show. It's a kind of show, yes. Yeah. But for a lot of people, I don't think they they, <laughs> they see that. No, they take it very serious. Mm-hmm. Because they're inside the show and think the show is the only thing there is. 
I think um, the s- silence mm-hmm. is in uh, cinema, watching the movie Humanity, mm. playing like they are separate individuals. Yeah. That's that's for me. So the silence is always the basic. Yeah. And the silence is you could call it consciousness or awareness, awareness, presence, Tao, God, Allah, yeah. Brahman, etc. Yeah, that's all you can say. Yeah. That's all you can say. Yeah. Um, if people want to get in touch with you, is there, there's no English website, no. I guess, no? But if maybe when you live in Amsterdam, so maybe someone in, in the near of Amsterdam who is living here for his work and mm-hmm. only talks English, you are open to talk in oh, English? Oh, yeah, maybe you, you can reach me at Facebook. Okay. Jan. Facebook, Jan Prince. Yeah, and Prince is not like the artist who passed away. But no, no, no. Uh, P-R-I-N-S. S. Yes. And um, are there maybe some things in English you wrote online? or maybe No. no? <laughs> it's, uh, it's only Dutch. Yeah. Maybe later... If yeah. the book will maybe translate in English yeah. or something, I will uh, uh, start a new website to do in two ling- yeah. to two languages. Did you get any? What kind of reactions did the book uh, bring to you? What, what did people say? You, uh, a lot of recognition really? and a lot of um, uh, reddingsboy. They call it. Uh, how do you say that in English? <laughs> life, a life saver. Yeah, yeah. Life li- saving. Life, life saving. saving. Yes, yeah. life saving. Uh, so life I, I was very touched by it because I thought in the beginning when I wrote this book, when I discovered something, yeah. And uh, in in the beginning of my search, I had a lot of difficulty to find the right books because it was all uh, very hard to to write. So I want to have a very light book yeah. and to talk about the ABC of this path. Yeah. Uh, to realize that there is no self. <laughs> yeah. But how, and, and to put it in very easy words. So that was the only purpose for the book. But now there are 2000 uh, copies uh, sold. So I was, I was shocked. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. There's also um, a musical playlist you made with, with yeah. music that touches your inner self or mm-hmm. however you want to call it, the s- silent. Silence. Um, can you, where can we find that? It's on Mixcloud. Yeah. And you have to go to uh, uh, Nu Even Still. Yeah. N U E V E N S T I L. Or just the website with that same yeah. name. Or Google Jan Prince Mixcloud. You can find it also, I think. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for this uh, nice conversation. But maybe one last thing, mm-hmm. as Colombo always does when he leaves the room. Um, there's this thing in Advaita, uh, we, we just touched it a little bit, where people say uh, this world is not real. Mm-hmm. When someone comes to you and says to you that phrase, what do you say? I always, uh, when people talk about philosophical questions, yeah. I always make it personal. Because a lot of uh, f- philosophical questions also also about is there a free will? Yeah. It's abstract. No. Do I, I have, have a free, free will? will? And then see for don't answer it, but yeah. see a whole month uh, wrote if you have a free will. Yeah. I, I'm I'm getting angry. Do I yeah, have to she, choose to get yeah, angry? Yeah. And then look. Yeah. So what was your question? Yeah. Sorry, I forget. No. Oh, uh, that's that is was the world the same. real. So is I, well, is World real to me. Yeah, it's a world real to me. me. Yeah. I am real. I am. Uh, yeah. Am I real? real? Who is that I that I'm real? And yeah. what is real? Yeah. How, how can you measure real? What is real? Yeah. So I, you have to you have to grasp something. Is mm-hmm. that real? Yeah. You can th- uh, grasp uh, thoughts, but they are real. Yeah. So what is real? And then go very deep into that. Yeah. And you, I predict you come out to nothingness <laughs> yeah that's a good practice to to for just for the sake of it make things personal yes yeah because no. the ego has to to seen yeah and then you see there is no ego but you can't not say there is no ego without to realize there is no yeah. ego because yeah. when you gra- when you read a book and you say there is no ego okay thank you yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's not that's not, not that's not no. how it works you have to see it for yourself 
because that's what they call Advaita Shuffle, that you uh, come into a mental state of mind where mm -hmm. you just think, I am nobody, there is no ego, there is no world, yeah. there is no free will, and you start saying that to yourself all the time. That doesn't yeah. work. No, but, they, uh, but that's the difficulty. They are right. Yeah. But not out of their mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what Alexander said. Yeah. You, you say the right words, but not out of your yes. mouth. They're right. Yeah. Yeah. And you can taste a difference between someone who just saying all the crap they read in the books or someone who asked themselves, did the self-inquiry and saw for themselves that the ego is just a mental construct that doesn't have any power. Yeah. Yeah. So, and when you don't discover it, yeah, you, you but still you have those... Uh, Cramps. Yeah. Yeah. And st the, the need to search is there. So yeah. you can say you can do nothing, you don't have to meditate, but still there is the search. And I say, go to meditate, yeah. go to uh, go to satsang, go to whatever you want, go search. Yeah, and you are the living example that uh, when when there's uh, when there's something seen, that that Advaita virus is still running through your veins. Y y once you're touched by the subject, once you you feel the truth of it. It will stick with you for the rest of your life. Yeah, I love Advaita. I love it very much because I it was um, seen in the space. It was seen in my heart, but it was not a mental realization. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Advaita people start with uh, yeah. mind realization, but my mind still had those answers. Yeah. So I had to uh, also read and go yeah. to the Advaita system. But afterwards. Afterwards, You were yes. glad you once told me that you, you didn't find Advaita 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, but because the Advaita shuffle, my ego... Would have loved it. Would have yeah. loved it, yeah. yes. Because there is no body. Oh, yes. Yeah, thank you. Then, I, then you have to read again. There is no body. Oh, yes. Oh. Because when you read there is no body, yeah. it has an effect. Yeah, it feels It feels true. good for yeah. five or ten minutes. Yeah. And then you go to sleep. And the next day, and here it comes again. Gong, and there it comes again. So yeah, it's, it's sort of a mental orgasm when you read that for the first time. Eh? Yeah. Ah, I am nobody. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then I go on Facebook and say 160 times a day to other people, there is nobody. Yeah, you are nobody. You are nobody. <laughs> I found out something about life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we all been through that phase. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Okay, Jan, we're talking for uh, almost an hour now. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you and very much. Success with everything and uh, uh, dig up this guy on Google. You will not regret it. <laughs>